Hey everyone, Mike Howes from the Crew Reviews here with a quick note. Internet difficulties we experience will show some intermittent uh, video sync delays with the audio. It's not your computer, it's not your connection, it's not your choice of drink creating this disturbance in the force. Maybe it's tied to inflation somehow. But on with the show. Boys, raise a glass. We have a very special show tonight. Yes, we do. We have author Landon Beach and narrator Supreme Scott Brick together. Yes, this together. is a special treat, guys. Mm -hmm. Welcome to the show. Cheers. Thanks for having us on. Thanks for, ha thanks yeah. for having us. We love it's it. It's marvelous. Thrilled to have you guys. Thrilled yes. to have you guys. And Ray um, Porter sends his regards. Uh, we love <laughs> Ray. Ray. Yeah, we, we have now had the two... The two best in the band yeah, that's right on the show. So, well, Landon, I'm going to start with you. And even though Scott's the narrator, I want you to narrate a quick summary of narrator for our viewers. <laughs> <laughs> well, narrator is an entertainment comeback story. And so you have a performing arts prodigy, Sean Frost, who was born and raised in a small Michigan town and against all odds uh, gets into Juilliard, uh, drops out from Juilliard and then goes and wins two Tony Awards because he's a fantastic actor and playwright. But as he gets accustomed to the lavish lifestyle uh, that accompanies that, um, his flaws start to emerge. And after a near death experience, let's say, uh, he decides to leave New York City and head out west to Carmel by the Sea and start all over and reinvent himself as an audiobook narrator. And he finds out that he's really good at it. And his, his skills emerge um, in being an audiobook narrator. Um, he starts to get accolades, but his flaws start to come out again. And then out of nowhere, uh, an audiobook narrator's worst nightmare uh, happens to him, and he's kidnapped by two obsessed fans who want to make him read their novel that they've written. And all of a sudden, we start to think, did this happen mm. or didn't this happen? Mm -hmm. And the rest of the novel uh, invites the reader to think, what is real and what isn't real from Mr. Sean Frost. And I think I'll leave it at that. Yeah, I think yeah, that's, that's pretty good. good. Leave it. <laughs> well, I love I, I loved that. I saw the description. I think it was Gone Girl Meets Misery, which I think is a really yeah. pretty uh, yeah, yeah. appropriate. Well, Scott, let me ask you this. I know among many of your talent, your many talents, you are a writer yourself. So when Landon came to you with this particular tale, did you kick yourself for not thinking of it first? <laughs> <laughs> Um, I, I didn't, I didn't kick myself for not thinking of it first. Uh, my, my first thought was, oh my God, um, I really don't need any help to seem self-centered. Um, <laughs> my, my, my first thought was, oh God. Okay. Uh, um, yeah, I'm going to narrate a book about narrating books. Hmm. Um, it was, uh, uh, yeah, I, 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 I have to be honest. I just thought, wow, okay. Well, I'm glad somebody else thought of this rather than me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, want, I wonder if, if uh, you hadn't worked with Landon before, though, um, would you have even entertained reading the manuscript, mm. considering the, like, the synopsis? Um. <sighs> <laughs> uh, a, a dear friend of ours uh, was over um, about uh, uh, a week ago, and I had the um, hard copy version of Narrator, 
uh, uh, in uh, our living room. And he said, you know, somebody's going to try to kill you, right? (laughs) (laughs) I was like, wait, what? And he goes, yeah, somebody's going to try to kill you and it's going to happen this way. Oh, Um, like (laughs) imitating art. My gosh. (laughs) Right. Yeah. Art imitating life. life Art. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Um, But uh, it was. uh, I look, uh, I remember uh, it was about Landon, you you know, correct me if I'm wrong. It was about six months ago when we first started entertaining this idea. You told me that you had this idea of, you know, of this book. And um, it was in, I think, November, Scott, when we were. Yeah. Zoom conference talking with each other. Yeah. Right. Exactly. And. and I just remember thinking, you know, ah, what a funny idea. He has this idea of, you know, somebody would, uh, um, um, <laughs> some, that some somebody would be so, you know, uh, into this idea of, you know, their favorite audiobook narrator in the world. Yeah. I don't, li- I don't live in that world, um, uh, uh, and yet. <laughs> Um, just a handful of months later, Landon gets in touch and says, Hey, can we go over this and make sure that I've got everything right? And mm-hmm. and I remember at the time I was like, wait, you, you were serious? <laughs> 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 and, uh, I started looking over the manuscript and, and part of me was like, Oh my God, this is the loveliest thing in the world. This is so lovely that you, you know, actually followed through on this. And then the other, according to my friend Josh, he was like, no, somebody's going to kill you. (laughs) (laughs) Brutal. Well, hey, Landon, uh, so this was, it was truly unlike any other book I've, I've read recently. Uh, I thoroughly enjoyed the mind the mind twists uh, and getting to see things unfold from different points of view. That's pretty good. Uh, and Sean Frost's internal dialogue, his references to current events, is, is sharp wit. It really helps in bringing the character to life. And I wondered if, as the author, you had Frost completely figured out as a character before you sat down to write, or if a lot of who he is materialized as you wrote the story. Yeah, so... I had never committed to developing a character the way that I committed to developing him. And mostly because I was going to take uh, a big risk uh, for me because I've never written in first person, let alone first person present before. Right. right. Yeah. When I thought for a psychological thriller that is going to ask the reader to wonder constantly what's real and what isn't it's the perfect opportunity because you can do a lot more with narration than you can with third person close or third person omniscient. And um, I've talked about this before that I really like Robert McKee's books. Um, One's on dialogue, one's on story, but it just happened to happen this way that he came out with his third book that he'd been kind of promising us for years. And it was called character And I got my hands on that book and just devoured it. And if you've ever read anything by McKee, uh, he's just incredible. His intellect and the way that he breaks down characters, dialogues, and stories um, is is really like no other person uh, I've met in the business. But you can get overwhelmed with it, too, because there's so much in there that it takes two or three reads to not get intimidated. You could read his book on character and you'd never start your novel because you wondered, <laughs> did, did I do everything right? Yeah. But I followed it chapter by chapter, and I spent months on Sean Frost. I mean, when when I met with Scott in November, we were zooming, and you know, and a lot of times, you know, we have similar interests, so we're talking, and then we're like, well, I guess we should get down to business yeah. here. <laughs> and he was doing some work; he was looking down. And I said, well, I mean, I'm thinking, Scott, about doing this uh, novel about a, an audiobook narrator <laughs> that gets kidnapped. And he went, <laughs> <laughs> just, I just went up. I'm like, 
<laughs> yeah. And I, I said, I have a few questions I'd like to ask you. <laughs> and he said, all right. <laughs> and so we, we went through those and, you know, a lot of it was, let's be honest, the, the biggest fear that an audiobook narrator has, of course, is something that happens where they can't speak. And so mm. it's kind of tongue in cheek, you know, that their biggest fear is that they're going to get um, kidnapped or whatnot. And we talked about that and just his insight was fantastic about just fears and things that go through an audiobook narrator's mind um, as they're doing it. So to answer your question, you know, in full, it was a lot of legwork um, to figure out who he was, because for 123,000 words, that's what the manuscript is. In order to be in somebody's head like that uh, and constantly question reality, I, just, I had to know the guy inside and out. But also, too, you're right, there were some opportunities where I said, wow, here's a neat thing that I could do with it. So I don't think you ever have it all figured out. But this one, more than any other book, I, I spent more time on that one character than I ever had. Well, he was completely fleshed out. Not not that the other characters weren't, but because, you know, a lot of the focus is on him. Um, I was drawn to his flawed, uh, you know, just how flawed he was as a character. And, right. and yeah. literally yeah. questioning reality um, and then not questioning it and then questioning it. And, and then like those mind twists for the reader myself, like, you know well, shit, is it, was it real? Like what everything he was experiencing. Yeah. Right. Um, so I, I, I loved it. Yeah. Um, hey, thanks Chris. <clears throat> Blaine, and I'll, I'll put this one to you too, as well. Um, as a best-selling author, um, you have a market and audience that you know fairly well and audiobooks, though it's necessarily tied to print really is its own industry. And it has a life of its own has a rabid following, yeah. Um, did you have to do any additional research uh, out of uh, outside of asking Scott about that industry that you felt like you knew it enough where you could write from that perspective? Because there might have been a little bit of a worry that these audiobook fans might come back at you <laughs> if they don't think that that you're getting what they believe Scott's world is like. Yeah, that's a great point, Mike. Um, I was really intimidated just because the amount of respect that yeah. I have for Scott. And I mean, he's, he's a legend and is so well known in the community. And he's such an incredible performer that I knew for me to be able to approach him, I had to do a ton of research because I wanted to know what I was talking about, even though I knew I would make some mistakes. And Scott was generous with his time to look over the manuscript and give a few tweaks that I just wasn't able to glean. But in the same vein that I answered Chris's question about spending time on Shaw and Frost, I spent months, uh, half a year, just studying the audiobook industry, yeah. listening to interview after interview, reading about mm. it, the equipment. And I, I tell you what, beyond all of that, the amount of respect I've gained, just what it takes to even narrate an audiobook well, um, I had no clue. Uh, and I think that, you know, there are people too, they're like, oh, well, you know, you just sit down and you read this book yeah, and, just talking it comes out on a, and it is not that <laughs> uh, at all. And so, yes, there was a, a ton of research before I even felt comfortable approaching Scott and showing him some of my work. Yeah. Um, and I mean, I know he's narrating it and working on it right now, and I, I hope it's paying off. <laughs> <laughs> I don't answer. Just answer that question. Answer it <laughs> in two words. I, I am narrating this work right now. <laughs> all right. <laughs> well, all right. So, Scott, let me ask you. So, Landon peels back the onion a little bit, giving our readers a glimpse into the life of a narrator. Um, there's the lip balm. There's the sips of water. There's the studio <laughs> setup. There's uh, so, uh, the the ice. Ice drops? I, there was something. I, I was looking it up as you were talking. Yeah. I couldn't read. Yep. Yeah. Um, uh, at one point, he even references you in the story uh, twice. Um, yeah. Not once, but yeah. twice. Yeah, he does. But but there's also a scene where, where uh, Achilles, uh, Frost's agent, is negotiating a deal. And, and I don't want to give anything away, but there's a massive up from fee. There's points on the back end, even a push for an acting role. 
uh, it was intriguing to say the least. And although it's a work of fiction, I couldn't help but wonder as I was reading all that stuff, how close Landon actually got to the truth. Um, I, 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 I wish <laughs> Landon's version of reality was reality. <laughs> Points on the back end. <laughs> right. You know, come on. money, baby, come on. My, to, uh, to my agent, work harder. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, I, I tell you what, it's, uh, it is very, 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 very weird uh, narrating a book when you are in it um, because I yeah. am mentioned. And, yeah. Well, first of all, Landon, God bless you. Yeah, no, he he dedicated the book to me yeah i i, I actually had to hire ray porter ray uh, porter <laughs> friend of the show long time listener first time caller um, <laughs> uh i i had to hire him to uh narrate the opening credits and the dedication because i don't need any help to seem self-centered um <laughs> I, I just i i could I, uh, uh, Landon, God bless you. Literally, I mean, I, I am as uh, um, um, overwhelmed by the that dedication, but I can't say those words myself. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Ray Porter will say those words for me. Awesome, a new guy, right? Um, Ray Porter, and new yet guy. there's this mo <laughs> there's this moment in the text <laughs> where at the audio words, the audiobook, you know, Oscars, mm -hmm. as, if you will. Right. Um, uh you know passing by a a, a table that has any and he only Everybody. uses last word uh, uh last names he says um he says porter yeah Fraley, dear friend of mine pat yep. Fraley, um uh uh brick so it's yep. like i'm passing myself you're uh, passing yourself uh, yeah Right. Uh, Freeman, yeah. my my girlfriend, Suzanne Lee Freeman, an audiobook oh. narrator, yeah. and Vance. Simon Vance. Wow. And I'm and I'm looking and I'm I'm reading this <laughs> I'm reading the text going, I can't believe this is happening. This is so <laughs> freaking meta. Yeah. <laughs> this is just with, you know, with Spielberg too, you're like you mentioned in the same sense, Spielberg right? and uh, <laughs> Hanks, yes. Tom and Hanks, all, uh, Billy and, D. Williams. And like you know, a, a paragraph or two later, it's it's uh, Tom Hanks, and yeah. I'm like, I I actually know Jim Hanks, uh, Tom's brother. Uh, I I've known him for years. Wow, We're not dear friends or anything, but I'm like, this is really freaking wild. Yeah. It's crazy. <laughs> But I, my question, this question is actually for you, Landon. And after several novels in your Great Lakes series, which features a variety of characters, archetypes from law enforcement officers to ordinary citizens in extraordinary circumstances, in Huron Breeze, you featured um, an author, and which was the most recent book before this one. And now you're doing an audiobook narrator. <laughs> so I'm wondering, is it coincidence that those two are back to back? Or have you finally reached the point in this industry where you just want to torture everyone? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't wait for the answer to this. <laughs> well, in terms of Huron Breeze, uh, I've got one more book to do for the Great Lakes Saga, The Bay, and I'm really excited to write that. But a friend in the industry challenged me and said, why don't you try a murder mystery? Just kind of shake things up. You've done four books in a row in the Great Lakes Saga. And so I thought I would give it a shot. And it was a really appealing idea and a lot of fun to write that. And it was completely different than uh, the Great Lakes Saga books. Um, in terms of the audiobook narrator book, really um, what I wanted to do was this book for a long time. And the reason is, is I grew up just watching a, a ton of films and four of them really spoke to me. Vertigo and yeah. um, Misery, of course, 
and um the one uh, play Misty for Me, starting. Oh yeah! Oh was, yeah! I love that. And it's then nice. uh, a beautiful mind. And those four <clears throat> films had me thinking for years about. I'd love to do some kind of novel in the entertainment industry, but I couldn't quite figure out how to do anything that would be new or fresh that people hadn't seen before. Because you know, the author getting kidnapped, a playwright, a producer, all of that had been done. Yeah. And so it wasn't until Scott and I started working together and I said, wow, I don't think anyone has done anything about an audiobook narrator and the audiobook industry is just exploding right exploding. now. Right, exactly. And I read a short story that I used to teach uh, to my students and it was called The Continuity of Parks and they loved it. Um, one, because it was only two paragraphs, <laughs> so no. it was really fast, <laughs> but it's an amazing story. And basically what happens is a guy sitting in a chair uh, with a green back and he's reading a novel hmm. at the start of the first paragraph. And then somewhere in the first or second paragraph, everything starts to meld together and you don't know, is it the story that he's actually reading or our events happening to him. And what it ends with is a killer who's entered a house and comes in and what he sees is someone sitting reading a book in that green armchair. And I was like, wow. And so I don't mm. want to give too many spoilers about narrator, but it definitely influenced that. So I, I mentioned it in the author's note at the end. It's kind of like a soup that I stirred for 20 years trying to figure out how to come up with this idea. And then after Scott and I started working together, I said, that's something that, uh, that, that might work. And really mm. all joking aside, I think that this book too is kind of my love letter just to storytelling and storytellers. Yeah. Yeah, I, don't, yeah. I don't think I'll ever write anything like it again. Uh, I don't know if I could, right. but it's just kind of, you know, my heart to, all the great storytellers and, you know, things that we've grown up with listening and reading throughout the years. Um, and it ended up, you know, having that kind of current with Sean too, that, you know, he's a flawed guy, like, like we all are. And, yeah, sure. and he's, yeah. he's fighting hard to, to come back and, you know, he's a hot mess, but <laughs> he is a hot he's got mess. a good soul. <laughs> and, and I, I made this clear too, that I never wrote it with Scott in mind. I, I knew Scott and I would work on it to be a narrator, but I thought because Scott is an incredible actor and that's where he started. I said, I think Scott Britt can play Sean Frost. And there's a clear distinction in that. So mm -hmm. it was never, uh, you know, it's not, this is Scott cement or Scott block. <laughs> wait, wait. Right, right, right. <laughs> <Scott Brick. laughs> so in narrator, uh, artificial intelligence is brought up and deep fakes is kind of mentioned as yep. well. So I, I guess this is mostly for Scott, then mm -hmm. is there a real concern or worry among the audiobook professionals that their voices could be used to narrate material without their consent and, and maybe put their careers at risk, I suppose? There is, um, yeah. Uh, and, and Landon and I had this discussion uh, when we were you know, talking about, uh, when, when he sent me the original draft um, um, there is an issue. Um, I, I am very active in the voiceover community. Um, yeah. uh, I am part of the, um, uh, steering committee for, uh, audiobooks for SAG-AFTRA, mm. um, the voiceover, um, union. And um, yeah, that is an issue. Um, I have been approached by companies saying, hey, could we license your voice no. to be oh. the voice of AI? And to be honest, I only took the call. I only took the meeting because I am an active member of my union. And, um, you know, right. I thought, is, is this something that we could get in front of? 
right. that we could, right. you know, uh, I, essentially the, the, the idea of it from the union's point of view is, um, you know, you can't stop AI. Hopefully you can license it. Wow. Hopefully <laughs> you can get out in front of it and, and make sure that, um, you could make sure that like you know what would i want um um my voice used for a political mm -hmm. candidate right that i loathe right um, yeah you know i would really i would hate for that to happen um anyway all of that said um we had the meetings and it was eye opening uh i've i have been an audiobook narrator since june 10th 1999 and i know that because i wrote it down for tax purposes uh, <laughs> because you know that's so funny uh, yeah you, you 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 could write off right you know how much how much mileage you, you had uh, you know, yes we, we know <laughs> right so um june 10th 1999 uh, mumble mumble years ago and um, <laughs> uh, the fact of the matter is uh, since then i have recorded a thousand yeah. audiobooks right crazy if ai is allowed to go where people want it to go they could use ai um and make another thousand in 15 minutes Right, Jeez. right. As long as you got paid for it, that okay. <laughs> unless well, it's unless it's Scott Brick reads penthouse letters, and you might, you know, you're an old aunt might be like, "Wait, that might this? sell." Oh, believe that me, might sell. I read penthouse letters, <laughs> <laughs> not out loud. It's like, yeah. um, it's, um, it's it's right. Um, it's potentially devastating to. Right. Um, colleagues, my dearest friends. Yeah, um, that's right. But the fact of the matter is, uh, you know, the the uh, um, the way that you read it, um, um, you know, uh, when you're reading fiction, it's like, oh, okay, uh, uh, I don't think that the deep fake capability um can duplicate yeah. that right. my hope my hope is for for all of my brethren right still requires right, exactly. emotion still requires yeah. and that's actually a great segue for so it's a two-part question i'm going to ask it to landon first but i have a follow-up to you scott and landon you you kind of answered part of this because i was going to ask you um if you know, narrator was a departure for you because you you've written in third person, um, and now you're writing in first person. And I was going to ask you um, if it was because you were itching to write a first person book, or if it was just because of the this narrative of this story, which you answered. But what I want to ask you now is, what were the challenges to you as a writer who who was sort of comfortable in one style um, as you transitioned into first person? Well. One thing, I'll start by answering something that made it a little bit easier that I had not seen before is that my background is in screenwriting and screenwriting is in present tense. And so that came a little bit more naturally because I've written scripts before. Um, the biggest challenge though, was just really saying, I've got to live with this guy for the entire book and I've got it, the moment that he doesn't ring true and the moment that he says or he thinks something that the reader says, Sean Frost would never think that. Mm -hmm. Sean Frost would never do that. Or the one that I think every author, the nightmare in the middle of the night when you wake up is, what if they don't like Sean Frost? You're banking <laughs> every, everything on him. So my, my third person work, um, you know, that, that Scott has read, you know, I like to use ensemble casts too, where there's a little bit in it for everybody. And, you know, we've got a, a good cast for narrator too, but it's so anchored to Sean and his psyche that I think that was my biggest fear. And I think that pushed me to do more character work on him um, than ever before, because 
whatever he was going to be, I was going to go all in a hundred percent for, uh, for that character. Awesome. Well, now your part of that question, Scott, is, is it a different approach for you as a narrator when you, when you are living in, in basically with, in, in the soul of one character versus when you are doing a third person multi ensemble piece? Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, (laughs) (laughs) um, (laughs) again, this is so meta. Um, (laughs) My girlfriend, Suzanne and I, again, Suzanne Lee Freeman, yeah, she's she's recording in the room next to me. That's so cool, wow. right? So her booth is there. Then we have a you know a door between us, yeah. uh, two doors between us, and then and, uh, three doors actually between us. Uh, uh, How big is this uh, place? Her booth, my booth, and the and the room. Um, and so I will walk upstairs, and she'll say, "Hi, honey, what happened to you today?" <laughs> meaning you know what happened to sean yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> man. um because uh yeah she uh um landon actually wrote her into his previous novel here on breeze um uh god bless you sir um and and uh, he he wrote her into it and we had her record those lines oh that's um, awesome oh nice yeah. um again it's really freaking meta um, yeah. but I will come upstairs and it's really, I, I, look, I'm, I'm exhausted at the end of the day and it's not like I've been digging ditches all day, you know, <laughs> it's not like I've been, come on, you know, it's a, yeah, I'm talking for a living, you know, <sighs> cry me a river. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. um, emotionally it's, it's, it, it is a little tiring And she'll say, you know, again, so what happened to you today? And I'll say, well, somebody kidnapped me (laughs) and beat the shit out of me. And, um, and, you know, then my, where's, yeah, I I don't want to get into too many many details, but it's like, wow, um, uh, uh, this, this idea. And my friend Josh, who came over and said, this is the way you're going to die. Dude, that's Somebody, <laughs> somebody's going to look at this. That's like, you know, the template. Blueprint. Uh, blueprint. Yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah, the blueprints work. for you know, how, how you. Well, how we'll you know will, then. We'll know. We'll yeah, know. How you will leave this earth. Um, <laughs> Which will make a hell of a true crime book, by the way, Landon. Put yeah. that down. Notes. God, for, <laughs> forgive me. Forgive me, my son. <laughs> we'll get Raider. <laughs> we'll get Raider. We'll get Raider. Narrated. <laughs> Yeah, remember, that book? remember that book we were talking about yeah. ray ray came ray was here in our house uh 10 days ago uh for the for the indy 500 and then i showed him the copy you know of narrator and and by the way landon just fyi um i i'll i i always add an exclamation mark to to the title so it's like narrator you know, because it just it makes me happy. It's like you know, jazz hands. You know, I am narrating. Narrator. Um, but but uh, uh, there's something. I look. I got to be honest. Uh, um, it, it it matters a great deal. Uh, I I watch. Uh, I I when I'm working. Um, the idea that I get to narrate a book that I'm in, mm-hmm. cool. You know, there, there's a there's a couple of moments where I'm actually mentioned by name, which is really weird, but really freaking cool. Um, yeah. And uh, <laughs> there's actually there's quotes. Uh, there's there's a moment where Sean, Sean, not me, Sean, um, he says. Um, yeah, this whole idea about being a famous audiobook narrator. Well, a colleague of mine once said that being a famous audiobook narrator is like being the tallest Tallest midget midget in the room. (laughs) And I'm like, that's me. That's me. That's me. I am his colleague. 
<laughs> I'm Sean's colleague. I, that's really <laughs> fucking cool. Sorry. I'm, I'm past. Um, <laughs> you know, it's that's like, so like funny. I can't believe I get to do this for a living. I had to get it in there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> When I was reading narrator, I saw, you know, I see the potential for a level of collaboration, obviously, that's more involved than, than the traditional arrangements, you know, between author and, and, and narrator. Um, what, you know, you alluded to it a little bit, but what was the communication and involvement, you know, before you got started and while you got started? Was this above and beyond uh, what, Scott, what you normally experience, I would assume? Um. I hear from authors every now and again, and it's typically, um, um, you know, uh, um, Brad Meltzer got in touch with me 10, 12 years ago and said, hey, just FYI, when you see this line in the text, the way I hear it in my head is, you know, mm -hmm. um, and so I will make sure to do it the exact same way. Yeah. Um, that's typically the the engagement with authors that I have. Or, you know, if I'm working on a Dune novel and I reach out to Brian Herbert, Frank Herbert's son, and I will say, okay, when you say this line, you know, should it be pronounced this way or this way? It's typically along those lines. For the first time in my life, though, when Landon reached out to me and said, um, uh, yeah, I want to write a book about a narrator. Uh, this was entirely like at one point he said um, at one point Landon said, um, is it a thing in the audiobook community to hit the record key? And I thought, wow. That is really, that is, that is a lot more intensive thought than most mm -hmm. authors put into mm -hmm. uh, what we do. He's, uh, you know, because I said there is no, there is no record key hmm. because there's hardware and then there's software. Yeah. And in software, there is no key. Right. There are shortcuts, you know, I can hit the numeral three in my, you know, you display and set up yeah, yeah. Exactly. right yeah exactly um and 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 there there was a moment i i uh, land up seriously i i need to give you your props there was a moment where you know he asked me to read the text and i was only able to get through like the first half maybe um and there was a moment where um there were the audiobook awards the audies and um uh, a woman won best female narrator for reading the autobiography of uh, Billy D. Williams. Mm -hmm. Right. And I said, man, I, I love the way that you think, but this would never happen because um, the audiobook industry is very gender and ethnicity centric. Mm -hmm. If a, if a black man writes a book, they're going to hire a black man to narrate it. If a white man writes a book, they're going to hire a white man to read it. If somebody from, you know, uh, from an island community, you know, whatever it is, uh, uh, um, um, a Hawaiian, Cameroon, whatever, they would hire somebody from that community to narrate the book. And I said, I'm sorry, the idea of of a, a woman narrating a man's autobiography would never happen. And the way that he addressed it was to address it, to say, you know, ordinarily this would never happen. Yeah. But Billy D. Williams heard this woman's voice and said, who says she can't narrate mine? Right. Yeah. Uh, memoir. right. Yeah. Oh, and that's all you need to do. Yeah. That's all yeah. you need to do. But he addressed it, you know? This, cool. is the, this is the way audiobooks are. He addresses it and 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 challenges the idea. And that was yeah, a cool yeah. scene. I loved it. Yeah, me too. He's got his cape really on. Was. She's got a yeah. cape on. <laughs> right. The the cape of many colors. <laughs> loved it. <laughs> because he's Lando Calrissian. That's right. Because he can. <laughs> yeah, right? he can do whatever no, he wants. No, but Lando, I, I really, 
I appreciate the fact that you went to such effort to, uh, uh, you know, to 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 make it right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I appreciate that, Scott. It, it was that was part of our collaboration was what's possible. And in the Audis, they're only, you know, with the Oscars, when you win a big award, everybody gets to come to the stage usually and accept it. But in the Audis, there's only correct me if I'm wrong, Scott, but I think three times that it happens and it's right at the end. And for the needs of my plot for who's going to win best male narrator, there was only one other speaking part and it was best female narrator before. So it wasn't, you know, best nonfiction book would have been earlier in the show and there'd be no one who goes up on stage to accept an award. And so that was where Scott gave me his industry, you know, inside information to say, because we all break rules when we write. Yeah. But he saved me here and in a couple other parts because he said, you have to acknowledge what the industry standard is to get the respect from the people that are going to read this. Right. And then say, I'm breaking this rule mm-hmm. and then you're good to go if, if you don't address it. And so that that was really uh, that was really helpful. I remember when I gave him the manuscript and here, you know, I'd done half a year of research and I'm excited. And he, he emailed me right away. He says, he says, boy, I can help you right out. I highlighted something on the first paragraph already. And I'm like, dang it. <laughs> oh, that's brutal. Which I well, felt horrible about because I'm like, this is his book. I'm just, you know, I'm not I'm not hired to be an editor. I'm not hired to be like you know, finger pointing, you know. Was, do this I read a lot of this. books, pal. But it was like well, it's you know, for Scott to be able to <laughs> to be able to allow me and to be so generous to let me collaborate with him because let's be honest, Scott does not need my help at all to narrate a book, but places where we've found common ground are when I might have clips of something because I have a lot of pop culture references and yes. you know stories and star Wars and things that, you know, we grew up with that, I was able to send him an email that had those clips so that when he got to those scenes, it might just give him something to kind of chew on and inform his performance. It's not, and I did read some horror stories about some authors that were like, hey, narrator, you work for me. You're going to narrate it this way, and this is the way I want it. Right. And I'm like, that, that would be absolutely horrible. So it's never been that way ever. It's always been take it or leave it here's something that might help out and I, we've really flourished and i mean it helps that we're good friends too and have a lot in common hey folks chris albanese here sorry about that uh we have technical difficulties all night long unfortunately um and so we're gonna go to the lightning round again unfortunately this actually won't have any video it'll just be all the audio so sit back relax and Get ready for some laughs. All right. So again, we raise a toast to the lightning round. Yes. This is a hell of a book and a hell yes. of a job narrating the book. Mr. Brick. And Mr. Thank B. you, guys. Bless you. Thank you. Okay. So uh, in the lightning round, I actually have two questions for each of you. I'll start, okay. with, you, I'll start with you, Landon. Uh, this is a very simple one. Is it true that your professional relationship began when you kidnapped scott brick <laughs> if that means the truth, <laughs> the truth. truth. yes yeah. that means when he agreed to narrate my first three books yes, i kidnapped the hell out of him <laughs> he still won't give me his phone number though <laughs> 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 talk to his agent talk to my agent 310-555-1212 see him with Suzanne oh great another email from Landon <laughs> hey if it makes you feel any better I have Ray Porter's uh, uh, phone number so I can call Ray I'll get Scott's number <laughs> yeah <laughs> no okay all right now this one's for you Scott as you read the manuscript to narrator <laughs> Did you begin to um, question your association with Landon and wonder just what in the hell you'd done to make him want to harm you? What the hell? <laughs> what, what, what did I do to earn his enmity this way? Um, uh, just just one, one quick thing about Ray Porter. <laughs> he, was over, he was over at, at our house. He's one of my dearest 
friends. And uh, he came over to watch the uh, Indy 500 uh, with me because that's the thing my father and I always did. And my father passed and, and Ray was like, I want to be there for you on the day when you have to watch the when yeah, awesome to, to, to yeah. watch the Indy 500. Okay. Ray is Ray is salt of the earth. Um, but yes, <laughs> on that same day, I showed Ray the physical copy of Narrator again, jazz hands. Um, <laughs> and, 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 never and said he's that. like, this is how you're going down. <laughs> Somebody is really going to take you out this way. Um, yeah, I, I remember thinking, wow, uh, uh, I. I, I'm I'm just it's even though it's the idea is somebody trying to kill an audiobook narrator, um, <laughs> I I am as uh, uh, um, I feel um, honored <laughs> the fact that an author that wants would, to kill me yeah. right exactly yeah <laughs> flattered I feel so flattered. honored that you know tough love <laughs> the beach would want to destroy me um but but still it's like uh, uh the fact that he put so much time and effort into uh into the craft uh this is actually and he dedicated the book to me so it's like there well yeah. it's one of the loveliest things um in my career ah, cool stuff okay so now we're back to landon landon has either your native michigan or your adopted florida offered to name a section of shoreline Landon Beach in your honor yet? Hmm. <laughs> Not yet, but there's a bar uh, up uh, in the town where my mom grew up and uh, they're thinking of naming a drink the Landon Beach. So I'll, I'll have to get back on you. <laughs> awesome. awesome. There's That's no great. higher honor. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, Scott, um, Penthouse wants to do an audio, but no, just kidding. Um, <laughs> so your experience I'm spans. I'm in. I'm in. <laughs> He's in. Next question. Your experience spans both contemporary novels as well as modern yes. and, and traditional classics. Uh, it's kind of mind blowing when I read the books you, you've narrated. But what author, living or dead, right. outside of Mr. Landon Beach, would you most like to sit and have dinner with? Stephen King. Cool. Oh. Oh. Uh, mm. Cyrano. Uh, Cyrano. Cyrano de Bergerac. Uh, 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 he All wrote right. the world's first science fiction novel, A Journey to the Moon, A Journey to the Sun. Um, oh, boy, that's hard. Um, and that was in town. Uh, <laughs> well, I, look, I, I, I would say... Uh, my my first my first instinct was to say Stephen King. He actually doesn't care for my narration that much. Um, he is a he he listens to audiobooks <laughs> all the time, and um, and he's said a few times in print that you know I'm not his favorite narrator. Um, <laughs> well, you won't get which, kidnapped then. You're okay. Brutal. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> at which point, my, my my agent said to me. Stephen King is talking about you in print. That's a good yes. thing. That's a good yes. thing. Yes. 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 But um, yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, I just there's something about him. He I think he is my literary hero. Uh he was asked, I think by Stephen Colbert. I don't remember. It was a number of years ago. And they said, Hey, Stephen, you've been writing for 40 or 50 years. And you know, at first they said, you know, the critics weren't really kind to you. Um, but you know you've you've survived all these years you've written all these books and 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 i think it was stephen colbert who asked him um you know all of these all of these critics you know had these harsh things to say about you they were kind of judging the genre rather than the writing what do you think and he said well i'm i'm kind of gratified by the fact that all those people who said bad things about me are dead now <laughs> and just, just thought, that's hysterical that's that's marvelous um uh yeah stephen king is uh okay stephen king is brilliant yeah good answer 
All right, my turn here. All right, <clears throat> Scott, this is one. Oh, we lost him. It's for you. Name the Philly native and legendary voice of the NFL films and football. NFL films and football follies is what Mike wants to say. Follies. Oh, oh, oh my God. I cannot believe I don't remember his name. In the frozen tundra of Lambo. That's right. I love that guy. I love that guy, and and I'm I'm genuinely embarrassed. I look, I'm on the, uh, I'm on the. Uh, okay. yeah. I'm on, <laughs> I don't think the Facinda yeah. family will be watching. <clears throat> no. That's oh right. God, yes, of course, of course. <laughs> Um, that, that music, you know, bum ba bum 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 Yeah, yeah bum, exactly. Bum. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Look, I'm I, on the... I get goosebumps I, when I hear that music. Yeah. <laughs> I was watching one of those movies earlier today, and I cannot believe that I forgot his name. <laughs> I, crazy. I'm on the, uh, uh, I'm on the uh, voiceover lab, uh, the sag after voiceover lab, the Don LaFontaine voiceover lab, and... Uh, um, um, I, I, I'm on the uh, uh, the board of directors, and I just cannot believe that I forgot <laughs> Senda's name. My God, that's okay. all right. Well, you won't be nearing that anytime soon. Okay, yeah. <laughs> they won't uh, be calling me anytime soon. <laughs> all right, number two. All right, for this one's for Landon, Billy D. Williams, and Tom Hanks. I'm sorry, they do what? <laughs> Walk into a bar. Who yes. are you more excited to meet? They more, who is he more excited to meet? Billy D, hands down. Yeah. yeah and I, I love I, Tom Hanks, but to say this man, I, I, I would love to meet Billy D. Cooler than cool. Yeah, I I saw him uh, live That's on right. stage in 2005, um, back when we thought it was going to be the last Star Wars movie. And I was convinced it was going <laughs> right. to be. And my dear wife pulled me aside and she's just like, oh, honey, honey, they, they make too much money. <laughs> I'm like, no, no, this is going to be the last one, I swear. Nope. And so, and I, it, it, makes was too in, much uh, money. it was in Indianapolis and they had, uh, George Lucas was there and everybody associated with the original trilogy and then finishing out the prequel trilogy. And so it was a it was a bucket list item to go and uh, sit a couple rows and hear Billy D and uh, George Lucas talk about Star Wars. It was it was phenomenal. Like we were talking before, Sean, that was when I was in Lafayette about an hour from where we're at in yeah. Kokomo. Yeah. And so it just happened to line yeah. up that uh, it was in uh, Indianapolis. Um, so yeah, it was it, be Billy D. <clears throat> That, that your, your right. line about about Star Wars being over reminds me of an almost famous when uh, the character's like, if you think that Mick Jagger is going to be out there when he's 50 years old, you're sorely mistaken, <laughs> mister. <laughs> okay, 70. Okay. <laughs> Ray Porter would love the fact that you brought yes, that up. Yeah. yeah, oh yeah, we talked yeah. about well, totally. You know, well, all of us, all of us are, you know, yeah. if I'm not mistaken, we're all pretty much Generation Xers. And so yeah. we just had that magical time frame from the mid 70s to mid 80s with Lucas and Spielberg that, yeah. you know, they can never take that away from us. Uh, just being excited to go see those films. And probably to some extent, all of our lives are, are kind of, you know, like a John Williams soundtrack. I mean, yeah, those are sure. just immortal tunes. And <laughs> I've often laughed. Scott and I have talked about this before. Uh, certain music that we like that you know gets us pumped up and whatnot. And I always thought of our collaboration uh, meetings because they've been so few. I mean, he's you know a top narrator. He he doesn't have a lot of time, and so I've always cherished those times when we get together. And I always think of when we say goodbye. It's you know like in Return of the Jedi. I remember when they uh, defeat the Sarlacc pit and mm, yeah. Uh, you know, they blow up Jabba's sail barge and it's like. <laughs> and like the Falcon goes Vroom! and Luke's X-Wing and I've, you know, right at the end of that. And I always am like, goodbye, brother, until we, until we meet yeah. again. Yeah. <laughs> well, as a baby boomer, I've got a, a small tear at the right corner of my eye. <laughs> 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 all right um as someone who is board certified in, in... oh mike's audio is all messed up 
know, orthopedic medicine. I need to know that in this. Hello, anybody? Yeah, yeah, yeah. we're here. Yeah. We're here. Go we're here. Go ahead. All right, because I. Man, this is a funny one. I want I want Mike to ask this question. <laughs> it's a I funny say, one. My, my audio is messed up. So. Yeah, your audio is right. kicking out. All right. Let, let's see if, Let's see if this works out. All right. Number three, as someone who is board certified in orthopedic medicine, I need to know something. What in the hell is Booth, booth Toe? Booth Toe. What is Booth Toe? Booth Toe. <laughs> I'm going to try and help Scott. I made that up. Okay. <laughs> it, it was You're not just, you know, wrong. A, yeah, a bunch of Jeez. a bunch of booth afflictions. <laughs> booth toe and guys guys narrating in the nude or without uh, their shoes oh, on. There was there was there was booth okay. dick as well. Let's, yes. this, you know, don't judge me. But I thought, <laughs> Method, method narrating, method narrating. Yes. <laughs> Gotta get into it. Tennis elbow and booth toe. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. They have a cream for that, Scott. So, <laughs> Mike, we're going to call you back well into now. the big leagues, buddy, to start operating again. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Mike's a booth toe like specialist. A multi billionaire. Like I learned it from an audio book. He's getting ganged up on. I feel like you're all. Like you're all judging me. Uh, <laughs> uh, used to be hip dysplasia. The fact of the matter is, oh. <laughs> anything that comes up, any physical issue that comes up when you're in the booth, you're like, oh my god, this is the worst thing ever. When it's not the worst. Yeah. Thing ever. Um, unless unless uh, booth, you know, with cramp. Yeah. Look, yeah. uh, you know, I, I, uh, uh, the craziest thing about audiobook narration are, are, are stomach noises, oh, you yeah. know, uh, not necessarily, you know, booth, right? booth toe is not the worst thing in the world, but the stomach noises are because, <laughs> yeah. because when you are hungry, your stomach growls and when you eat your stomach growls. So it's like, well, okay, what do I do? And I swear to God, I get a king size pillow, a, a regular pillow, not not good enough. I need a huge, wide king size pillow to wrap around my stomach because, <laughs> um, you know, it growls Muffles. and yeah. and I have to shut off even like the sides of my <laughs> stomach. Um, <laughs> It's, it's, right. a, it's a thing, you know. All right. I, and and I've thought about like you know the the technical name for uh, stomach noise is borborygmus, borborygmus, you know. And I'm like, well, wow, maybe I could, maybe I could make you know bricks borbor bricks borborygmus bumper. You know, and just and just and just sell very, very niche. narrators no, dozens. You would sell dozens. It's very niche. Right. Yeah. I would sell. I would sell tens, tens. of uh, uh, bricks for Borygmus bumpers. Yeah. And then and they would your, love your customer me for list. It. Is your customer list is actually in this book? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Scott. So you've had a pretty amazing career. Uh, you've been an actor both on stage, cinema. You've started a very successful audio book company um and soon uh a pillow wrapping belly yes company yes, exactly. um, uh, so you've won Scared awards death, you've been nominated you've been nominated for a grammy and audiophile even proclaimed you as uh you a golden voice but if you had to look back on all of that what would you say is the one thing that you're you are most proud of oh my god um Wow. Uh, uh, I had a, I had a woman get in touch with me and say, uh, she was in an abusive relationship and she, um, um, she got, uh, um, panic attacks. Mm -hmm. And she said that when she listened to my audiobooks, instead of dealing with like a three hour panic attack, it would be like a 20 minute panic attack. I gotta be honest. Uh, it, it, I, I I was I was sobbing when I read her email, and I thought, 
you know? That's awesome. That's a, it's, not, it's not just reading that, books, you know? It's not yeah, just reading books. that's, a, that's, yeah. a, lo- that's oh. a lovely thing. Right. Uh, I am really proud of that. And, and who knows? It, it, the sound of my voice, the timbre of my voice, you know, whatever it is uh, that, that made a difference for her. I'm like. That's a cool thing to be proud of. Love it. Right. Yeah. I love it. Um, okay, Landon, other than uh, the better climate, what's Florida have over Michigan? <laughs> better headlines. <laughs> <laughs> Marginally better football team. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh wow what about their baseball tampa team bay, tampa bay tom brady don't, I don't mm. hear well, the marlins i don't know as, as much as much as i love the the great lakes and if you've never been there and stood on the shoreline and someone blindfolded you and took the blindfold off and said where are you at it feels like you're on the ocean yeah um there is yep. there's just nothing like the ocean there, there's nothing like the ocean. Yeah, and especially so, in December, it's really warm and balmy. Oh, <laughs> I, I don't miss shoveling roofs at God. all. <laughs> shoveling roofs, yeah, the lake effect snow, huh? Beautiful stuff. Oh, it's, Beautiful oh, stuff. It's Screw bad. that. All right, here's the last question. Yeah, the uh, real thing? Last question you guys will have to endure. Uh, it's an easy one. I think it's easy. Uh, in the age of streaming and Kindles and video games and a million other things to occupy mankind's attention, why do you think audiobooks have been so successful lately? Either any, either one can take that. Uh, Landon, I'll let you go first. No, I'll, I'll, I'll chime in after. Last week, my wife finished teaching uh, her third grade year um and she read them a story and for the last two class periods before they let out for the summer she just got a circle of sweet little third graders listening and whenever there would be a part of the book they'd be like oh (laughs) oh and I, i think that all of us whether we want to admit it or not love being read to and the magic and the power of story, it just never leaves you. I certainly would have never envisioned what it could become where you take a walk, you're multitasking, whatever, and still listening to audiobooks. That I, I never saw that. It was someone that I knew that commuted with books on tape. And that was so foreign to me back then. I, mm-hmm. I, I couldn't even comprehend it. But at the root of it, yeah, uh, it's the oral tradition and we were all storytellers from the time we were on a, a campfire um i think in my opinion i'll let scott go no i i am mm. i'm uh, you and i land I, I love you we are so like-minded um the fact of the matter is look years ago i was being interviewed by the wall street journal and and I, it was a leading question they said do you think audiobooks are are you know really popular right now because of the you know uh um uh the way that uh technology has advanced all of these years you know you you can listen to them on your phone it was clearly i i was being led into this answer and i said no and you would think i'd have farted in church (laughs) You know, it, it was it was clear what they wanted me to say, but I used to be um, <laughs> I used to be uh, um, I used to I uh, got I wrote 300 articles uh, for various online or you know print publications in, in in three years. And I was like, no, I really don't think that's why audiobooks are so popular right now. And the woman who asked me, she was like, well, why do you think it is then? And I said, because we used to be read to mm. before going to bed at night. And we, we still do it. my kids. Still do yeah. it. We miss it. Yeah. And that's why audiobooks are popular because we love being read to. Yeah. And, and, and I remember at the time she was like, that. oh, okay. And she's writing furiously like okay well this might be salvageable uh, a salvageable interview but I'm like, that, that's yeah 
That's Perfect. what it is. <laughs> what a way to end we the miss, show. We miss <laughs> being read to. Yeah. Awesome. As my Vin said. It. So we will uh we will have all of our mothers on the next show to read to us. <laughs> um yay. <laughs> <laughs> a special crew reviews. Read us to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> no, but uh this did anything but read me to sleep. This was a fantastic, exciting book. Um yeah, I took, I took notes. Perfectly narrated. Uh th- this has been a, a hell of a lot of fun, guys. Yeah. Uh, it's really it's really cool to get this insight into both your relationship and the, the audiobook experience and how it influenced the writing of this, uh, Landon, um, Scott, just thrilled, thrilled you were on as well. And, um, it's just, uh, we, we, we appreciate you guys' time. We, we hope that this book is nothing but a success in every format. Cheers. Sean, Mike. Thanks, guys. It means a lot to to have us on and to be able to talk with you. Big fan of your work. And thanks for everything that you do just for for authors and narrators uh, and the time you put into it. It's it's a it's a labor of love and uh, I really have a lot of respect for what you three guys do. It's it's fantastic. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. We will push the heck out. Thank you so much, guys. And, uh, and, um, you know, tears, tears to your success. Thanks. Hey, boys. We really appreciate it. Thank you.